Good. Okay. So I'm going to record it. So uh, for all those who are missing it because of the login problems, at least I'll be able to send it to them. So thanks for joining and I hope we'll get more people popping on when they see the emails and, and figure it out. Uh, sorry about this. So as a technical problem, um, the club email that they gave me to sign in didn't work. I tried it several different ways, tried a couple different things and it didn't work. And I can't reach the person who helps me with this if there's an issue. So we're using an alternate thing and uh, alternate method and we're using Ann's account. So thank you very much, Ann, for, for doing this for everybody. All right, so the discussion for Ladybird. Um, and first I wanna say, uh, if possible, I appreciate it. If everyone could, uh, I would appreciate it if you on Facebook subscribe to catsreviews.com so you'll get all my updates. And um, on YouTube, all, the, all these are recorded. Um, on my YouTube account, Ed Katz, simple as that, Ed Katz. So now for Ladybird on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it got a 99%. And there's a story, stop. And there's a story about that. The dog is uh, nagging me. But there's, there's a story about that is because the reason it's not 100%, one particular critic saw it was having 100% out of 160 reviews and he tanked it to purposely knock it off of 100. So there's a story about that that I'll, I'll get to in a little bit. But the uh, Rotten Tomatoes consensus was that, quote, Lady Bird delivers fresh insights about the turmoil of adolescence and reveals writer-director Greta Gerwig as a fully formed filmmaking talent. Okay. Um, first off, by show of hands, who liked the movie? Okay, pretty close to everybody. All right, good. Um, the budget for this movie was only $10 million. The box office in the United States was 49 million and overseas 30 million. So $10 million and it made 79. The writer and director was Greta Gerwig. And um, I will cover a little bit more on her in a minute. Um, the, the cast, uh, Sorcy Ronan got four, Oscar, she's won four Oscar nominations and uh, she won the Golden Globe. For, for Lady Bird. In 2020, the New York Times ranked her the 10th greatest actress of the 21st century. It's high praise and maybe a little over, but, but very high praise indeed. Uh, Lori Metcalf, who plays her mom, Marion McPherson, was also nominated for the Oscar. She had three Emmy Awards that she won, 11 nominations, mostly for Roseanne. Um, she also had six Tony nominations and she won in 2017 for A Doll's House Part II and in 2018 for Three Tall Women on Broadway. And uh, as I said, she was also nominated for the Oscar for this. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, who plays Kyle, sort of the bad boyfriend, um, he was an Oscar nominee for Call Me By Your Name. Um, and he was also in Little Women. The interesting thing about this movie in Little Women, which was Greta Gerwig's next movie that she made after this, is that um, she cast uh, several people from this movie. So uh, she brought Sorcy Ronan and Timothy Chalamet, and I think there was one other person that she also uh, cast in that. And then um, Beanie Feldstein, who played Julie, who was uh, um, uh, Sorcy Ronan's Ladybird character's best friend, She's the sister of Jonah Hill in real life. And I wanna to get to Tracy Letts in a minute too, um, who was the father, Larry uh, McPherson. All right, so let's start with the director and writer because that's pretty significant and she did all that, Greta Gerwig. So Greta Gerwig was born in 1983. She's an American actress and filmmaker. She got known for appearing in what are called mumblecore films, which are sort of slacker uh, movies, slacker attitude, and they call them mumblecore because the characters don't enunciate, they mumble, essentially. So since the early 2010s, she's collaborated with uh, her partners, Noah Baumbach, and he made Greenberg, and they made together Francis Ha, if you saw that in 2012. Uh, Gerwig received a Golden Globe nomination for that for her acting. Um, she, she has two, her two solo directorial ventures are Lady Bird and Little Women. Both got Academy Awards for Best Picture nominations. 
and um, she uh, she was nominated for best director and best screenplay for Lady Bird, and for um, Little Women she was nominated for best adapted screenplay. And Greta Gerwig is listed in the Time 100 list of the most influential people in the world, top 100 uh, in 2018. Coincidentally, or maybe not, she was born in Sacramento. So you can tell the Sacramento vibe that comes through. Also, I wanted to ask, did anyone notice or pay attention to um, what year the film was set in? Anyone, you can unmute yourself. Amy, go ahead. Got to, got to unmute yourself. There Wait, you, go. you, you asked what Sacramento? What, what did you ask? Right, what year, what year? Oh, 2002 or something? 2002. Right, yes, exactly. Yeah. It starts in 2002 and then goes to 2003, right. Okay, um, and you know, as we've talked about before, in movies set in a certain time period, they're more made about when they were made than the actual time period evoked in the movie. This is a little bit different perhaps because she, Greta Gerwig who wrote it and directed is going back to where she grew up. So it is sort of autobiographical, but, but not really in the sense that she said she was not at all like the character in the movie. She was a much better behaved child, didn't you know do any of the things that uh, Sarsi Ronan's uh, Lady Bird did. Mm -hmm. But she did attend a, uh, uh, an all-girls Catholic school, and she graduated in 2002. She described herself as, having, um, as being, quote, an intense child. Uh, she showed an early interest in dance and fencing. Um, she did go to New York, uh, and Barnard College is actually where she went. Um, she, and she performed in the uh, Columbia University Variety Show, interestingly enough, with Kate McKinnon movie mm -hmm. actress and of Saturday Night Live fame. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see, I want to skip past this. So yeah, like I said, a lot of awards. Um, Lady Bird did win best motion picture in music or comedy category at the Golden Globes. And uh, won a, had a ton of awards, uh, National Board of Review, American Film Institute, Time Magazine, all named it one of the top 10 films of the year. Um, at the 90th Academy Awards, it was nominated for Best Picture, Director, Original Screenplay, Best Actress, and Best Supporting Actress. Um, okay, in, 2000, in, the, in the 2010s, IndieWire ranked Lady Bird as the 10th best film of the decade, Rolling Stone ranked it 23rd, The AV Club ranked it 10th, Business Insider ranked it 5th, uh, there were a couple others as well. So, a question I wanted to know is, where did the title come from? So in an interview with Greta Gerwig, uh, she noted that uh, Lady Bird Johnson had nothing to do with it. It was not any inspiration from that. And she writes, uh, or she comments, she goes, I just did press in Texas and it's so confusing there. They were like, why? Why did you call it Lady Bird? Because obviously Lyndon Johnson, Lady Bird from Texas. She told NPR in an interview, the name seemingly came out of nowhere. I had been writing all those scenes and I couldn't find exactly how it all fit together. I felt like I was hitting a wall and then I put everything aside. I wrote at the top of the page, why don't you call me Lady Bird? You promised that you would. And she writes, and I have no idea where that came from. So there's a actual inspiration. She later realized she had the name in her head because she'd once read the mid 18th century Mother Goose nursery rhyme, Lady Bird, Lady Bird. Uh, the exact rhyme varies, but uh, Greg Gerwig cited the version that goes like this. Lady Bird, Lady Bird, fly away home. Your house is on fire. Your children shall burn. That was her inspiration. How about that? Um, uh, let's see. Oh, so uh, Greta Gerwig, when describing her sudden fascination with the word, told NPR, quote, this is the creepy, mysterious part of writing. So now the critical response, um, the, the movie premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival and got a standing ovation. Um, I mentioned that Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, right. So it had 163 consecutive positive reviews and then stayed at 100% until the 196th review, which I guess broke a record by held by Toy Story 2. So a film critic named Cole Smithy gave it a negative review. And uh, I'll cover that in just a minute. Um, I wanna get to some of the positive reviews first. Oh, wait a minute, someone's coming in, okay. All right. 
Um, thanks for coming in. Apologize for the difficulties in getting on. I was very frustrated by it myself, but thanks for bearing with us. Um, okay. So the New York Times, A.O. Scott, uh, Tony Scott described Lady Bird as, quote, big screen perfection, exceptionally well written, full of wordplay and lively argument. Every line sounds like something a person might actually say, which means that the movie is also exceptionally well acted. Uh, Todd McCarthy of The Hollywood Reporter wrote the film was, quote, modestly scaled but creatively ambitious and succeeds on its own terms as a piquant audience pleaser. He gave praise to Ronan, who he said just seems to keep getting better all the time. Uh, Variety praised her direction and script as well as Ronan's performance. Um, San Francisco Chronicle wrote the film was beautiful and warm and inspired. The Washington Post described the film as a triumph of style, sensibility, and spirit. And Rolling Stone rated the film three and a half out of four, in which he deemed it as, quote, simply irresistible, unquote, and complimented the film's plot and narrative while highlighting the performances uh, and na name, named them as Oscar calls. Um, okay, uh, Richard Roper in Chicago Sun-Times, unique and original and fresh and wonderful and appealing. And okay, that pretty much covers those. Um, okay, any comments or thoughts from anyone at this point? You wanna interject any thoughts on the movie so far? Anyone have a hand up? Nancy, you unmute yourself and go ahead. Got to unmute first. Still muted. Okay. There you go. I just, I loved the fact that it had so many issues. I mean, you had the religion, you had gay, you had, you had every, I mean, it was almost like there was just so many social issues that you could just have a, a major conversation about. I don't right. know how you can pack that many issues into the film and still have a, a very enjoyable, entertaining film. And funny, right? Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of funny parts. That's what I thought. I thought the exact same thing you did. I was kind of marveling at it. And Anne and I saw it when it first came out in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And then I watched it again about a week or so and then a couple of nights ago. So I've seen it three times now. And, and I was thinking the exact same thing you were. It's like, wow, they cover a lot of issues, okay. but it's funny. Um, and it still uh, has dramatic tension as well. So I, I was very appreciative of that fact. Yeah. Um, now, I think it's kind of interesting that uh, the character of Lady Bird, she describes her name when she's asked about that name and she says, it's her given name. It's given to me by me. By me. <laughs> yeah. That was a good line. Yeah. Great line. The, uh, and then there was another thing, and, and Tony Scott in the New York Times Review noted a few things I wanted to bring out because I, I thought he nailed a few of them here. He comments on um, the uh, sister Sarah, uh, who was the principal of the school, uh, was reading her college application essay. And she says, it's clear how much you love Sacramento. And of course, that's a big shock, not only to Lady Bird, but to all us viewers, because we know she was saying negative things about how she had to get out of Sacramento and couldn't stand it anymore. And so she's trying to be polite. So she says, I guess I pay attention. And he writes, she says, not wanting to be contrary. And the sister <laughs> says, don't you think they're the same thing? So the idea, and this is what he goes on to write, the idea that the attention is a form of love and vice versa is a beautiful insight. And in many ways, it's the key to Lady Bird. Greta Gerwig's beautiful, insightful new film, the first for which is solely credited as writer and director. Uh, she is a Sacramento native, okay. Um, Okay, uh, it's got, uh, okay, if you pay the right kind of attention to Lady Bird, absorbing its riffs and digressions as well as its melodies, its choral passages, along with its solos and duets, you will almost certainly love it. It's hard not to. Uh, Lady Bird herself may be, it more, may be a bit more of a challenge. Played with daunting, dauntless precision by Sarsi Ronan, who was 23 when this was made, so she's playing a 17 and 18 year old. Um, Lady Bird give, uh, can give herself and everyone around her a hard time. Not because she's especially reckless or troubled, uh, but because she insists on asserting her own individuality even when she's not quite sure what that means. Now, there was an, another fascinating scene, I thought, in the store when they were trying on the dresses, when the mother says to her, I want you to be the very best version of yourself, says, and, and according to the way Tony Scott writes in the Times, says her judgmental, habitually disappointed mother married. And Lady Bird's response is, you remember what she said? 
but what if this is the best version? And right. yeah. the, the really fascinating part is the mother's reaction to like, oh my God, please no. Like you see that look on her face. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, and of course, Lady Bird saw it too. So it just goes to the, yeah. you know, the friction between the two of them and the disappointment they tend to have with each other. Um, so it says in the review, Christine wants to satisfy her mother, which is a difficult task because the standards seem impossibly high and subject to change without notice. Okay, sorry about that. Um, she wants to be true to her own desires and convictions, which is difficult for other reasons. Well, I thought it was kind of interesting because it was clear her mother had a lot of insecurities yeah. um, and, and she kind of projected them onto Lady Bird. Yes. And, you know, the letters that she oh, 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 can you mute yourself? Okay. 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 What happened? <laughs> Some, someone had a muting issue. Okay. Oh, Thank you. so, you know, when, when she got to school and her father had given her all those yellow legal pad, you know, things that her mother had written and crumbled up and her father said, you know, your mother doesn't think she can write well. That was so indicative of her mother's low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And she just, she projected it onto Lady Bird. Right. You yeah. Know? And do you remember the scene Lady Bird responded once when her mother wasn't talking to her and she said, I'm sorry for wanting more. Right. Like that's right. a bad, right? Yeah. Like her mother just wanted her to be content with the life she had and the best that they could give her. Right. And Lady not expect And not You know, like when she was saying that she wants to be able to pay her back, all right. she, and she goes, well, I don't think you'll ever get that kind of a job where you'll make that kind of money. That was so horrible. Right. <laughs> that was right. so awful. Right. I just want to be like, what mother says that to their child? Right. right. <laughs> and same with, you know, getting in the schools. Like, oh, you'll never get into those. Right. You, know. you have to go to Davis. You're never going to get into an East Coast school. Right. Yeah. So, um. All right, I wanted to have a couple other notes from uh, uh, Tony Scott's reviews. I think you'll, you'll like. The script is exceptionally well-written, full of wordplay, lively argument. Um, it's not too quick to soothe the abrasions of class and family. The McPhersons are hardly poor, but the daily toll of holding on to the ragged middle of the middle class is evident in Larry's melancholy and Marion's ill humor. They are a loving family, but their steadfast devotion to one another doesn't always express itself in, as kindness. They are real people, honestly portrayed. That might make Lady Bird sound drab and dutiful, but it's the opposite. I wish I could convey to you just how thrilling this movie is. I wish I could quote all the jokes and recount the best offbeat bits. I'd tell you about the sad priest and the football coach, which I thought was very funny, the football coach coaching about the play. Yeah. <laughs> and about the communion wafers and the Sacramento real estate, about the sly, jaunty editing rhythms, the oddly apt music choices, and the way Ms. Ronan drops down on the grass in front of her house when she receives an important piece of mail. I'm tempted to catalog the six different ways the ending can make you cry. I'll settle for one. The bittersweet feeling of having watched someone grow in front of your eyes into a different and in some ways improved version of herself. In life, that's a messy, endless process, which is one reason we need movies. Or to put it another way, even though Lady Bird will never be perfect, Lady Bird, the movie, is. So I thought that was a nice way to wrap up that review. Um, there's another one I wanted to read, and that's uh, or part of it from this is the, from the New Yorker. Uh, Richard Brody writes that Greta Gerwig is a brilliant writer has been clear since the very start of her movie career, because the films in which she first starred, such as Hannah Takes the Stairs and Yeast, I never even heard of Yeast, I got to admit, were already her feats of writing. Her dialogue in those films was mostly improvised, but it's vastly superior to the texts of many acclaimed screenwriters. Um, Lady Bird, the first feature she is directed alone, the first to be fully scripted, to be made a sub with a st substantial budget and large and professional cast and crew is full of exquisite dialogue. The experience of watching it for review is the experience of scribbling in the dark as fast as humanly possible, not only to be able to quote it and describe it, but above all, to be able to savor it. I, I can relate to that one. Um, okay. Coming of age story, he talks about the title. Um, Ed, can I make a comment? 
Sure, go right ahead. Yeah, I think the one of the things that impressed me with the over, overwhelming story here is that, that what she learns is life is not what it appears to be. Over and over again, all through the film, you know, she's dating a heterosexual and it turns out he's homosexual. Um, she has <laughs> sex with it. She has sex with a guy and he th she thinks it's the first time they're both getting deflowered and he's had many episodes before. So that, that, was, an, that was a recurrent a recurrent theme in the movie. The other recurrent theme, I think, is an economic social one. You know, they lived in the, on the wrong side of the tracks and it was over and over again. She, she befriends uh, the, the rich spoiled girl, the pretty girl in high school because she's rich. And she uh, tells people she lives in that big blue house of the grandmother of the first boyfriend and all that stuff. So I thought there was a lot of, a lot of themes that were really well done in the film. Uh, life is not what it appears to be, economics, uh, the caste system of society and, and capitalist America. Right, and, even and, when you're talking about economics and what it doesn't appear to be, remember she lied about the house she lived in. Yeah. She made up the, that it was her gay boyfriend's uh, grandmother's house and before she even knew that, that's the house she was pretending she lived in. She told uh, her, her rich friend, um, wasn't a real friend, but she thought she was or tried to make her a friend, she told her that's where she lived. And then of course the girl shows up at the door and big embarrassment. Um, so another comment uh, from the uh, New Yorker review, Gerwig doesn't romanticize the McPherson's genteel frustrations. She shows that they wear on Lady Bird as well. When the mother chastises Lady Bird for being demanding after Larry loses his job, Lady Bird responds with a smart but immature tantrum, insisting Marion give her a number, tell her how much it costs to raise her. And then of course she goes, I doubt you'll get that good a job. Later, speaking of Larry's depression and trying to couple it from his job insecurity, Marion tells Lady Bird, money isn't life's report card. Being successful doesn't mean that you're happy. Lady Bird responds, but he's not happy. It's a brilliant exchange, just as money doesn't guarantee happiness, it's no bar to it either. On the contrary, Lady Bird has a vision of herself, of style, and of freedom of action that will take money to foster and sustain. In her sour retorts, there's a ring of truth. The character of Lady Bird is impulsive, ardent, spontaneous. She disrupts a lampoon and lampoons a school assembly about abortion. She plays a reckless practical joke on the school's principal, a nun. She declares with a curtly decides frankness when, when she does want sex and when she doesn't. Uh, nonetheless, her volatile temperament comes through more in the writing and the drama than in the performance. Ronan doesn't quite display the text's sudden and mercurial energy. Metcalf, playing a character of taut and measured precision, I'd like steals to the film with her precise inflections and focused glances. In general, Greta Gerwig fa favors precision in Lady Bird. If the films in which she came up flaunt ambiguity and, in, and the impenetrable, opaque idiosyncrasies of people, here she focuses oh. her emotions within oh. tight limits, the better to ring out and harmonize with a piercing, poignant clarity. <laughs> and you mentioned two scenes specifically late in the movie that are the most thrillingly directed of, she got, he writes, of recent moments and suggest with a clarity that her directorial imagination reaches beyond the film's primary mode of practical drama. To avoid spoilers, let's just say, one is a scene of Marion driving by herself and the other is a scene featuring flashbacks from Lady Bird's point of view. These scenes com composed of disparate elements, rich in subjectivity, conjuring drama and emotion with simple but bold devices of editing, rise very high as cinematic music. Uh, these moments are the movie's greatest exhilarations, even more than the copious and generously imagined drama that gives rise to them. They suggest the wider and freer inspirations of the directorial career that, if there's any justice in the industry, Gerwig is launched upon. So I thought that was a very, very high praise indeed, and, and I don't think he's wrong about anything he said there. Anyone have any thoughts on that? Yes, Ann. I don't have a thought on that, but I wanted to comment on um, something that Amy said about the mother and how, you know, how distressing it was, how she passed along, she's damaged and how she passed that along to the daughter. But the father, on the other hand, I was so touching so many of the yeah. things The thank God for that father. You right. Know, you know, really, I thought it was extremely touching, all the different things that he did, the letters and the you know, financial financial aid. Board and I don't know, he just, he just okay. was, a, I didn't see him yeah. as a depressed person. I mean, he was an well, under, but he was on medication. 
yeah, well, maybe that's why he wasn't so depressed. He was on medication. Right. But I did think of him as really good time. Okay. He, he was kind. He had a good heart. He was kind, right? He was kind. Absolutely. And, and how, you know, how um, emasculating it was for him to go to a job interview oh, yeah. and awful. then see that his son is applying for the same job and yet it didn't let him bother, yeah. you know, it didn't, it didn't, he didn't let it bother him. When he saw Lady Bird, he said, let's go get a bag of Doritos and celebrate. And he essentially just found out or realized he wasn't going to get this job. It was going to go to his son, but yeah. he was so selfless. Whereas yeah. I think her mother was so selfish. Mm -hmm. They were, they were the opposite. Mm -hmm. That's, that was my take on it. The daughter of an yeah. I agree. Great, great point. Um, I wanted to comment on the father, the actor Tracy. Let oh, I'm sorry, Irene, go ahead. Un unmute yourself first, Irene. Irene, you have to unmute yourself. Irene, you're still muted, Irene. Okay, one sec. Yeah, you are. Wait, I have something to say. Go ahead, Irene. Wait for Irene. She's I just on. got out. Um, I lost you. Go ahead. I lost the, I lost every, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we hear you. Yes. Oh, okay, because I can't see you. But I was just going to say that the mother was more like the nun than the nun. I loved the principal <laughs> of the school. She had a sense of humor and she was kind. Yeah. And the mother was yeah. so rigid. Strong. And the father was so kind. So the mother really stood out as this very rigid, <clears throat> cruel, almost cruel person. Oh, yeah, very cruel. I yeah. thought that... I thought that the most important part of it is that when she was Lady Bird growing up, she was a kid and immature and her mother was realistic. And at the end, when she left the voicemail to her mother and yeah. she used her given name by her That's mother's right. given name to her, yeah. that that was it. She grew up and, and left home. Yeah. She also let go of her anger towards her mother by doing that. That's the reality. Yeah. Right. 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 Mother for mother's a mother. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but I think it's for... There's forgiveness. I don't think the mother was so cruel. I think she was a tough, hurt. She was damaged. broken. She was damaged. But she yeah. really loved this 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 girl. Her aspirations and her hopes and dreams were put in through this her daughter. She lived a lot through that uh, watching her daughter. That uh, and she kept the family she was, together. She was really too tough. She was really too tough in some ways. But I think she was deeply, deeply loved her. And I think in her way, she was protecting her by saying yeah, those things. The hurt, yeah. the, the potential was, hurt you know, that she like experienced. The, yeah. Don't aim so high and you'll be okay. And right. Right. it was a form of protection for her. I mean, it came but, off But don't different. you think it was projection of her own issues? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, sure. I, I, I you're you're, 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 it was her own yeah. insecurities. She never yeah. thought right. that she'd be able to attain right. those kind right. of achievements. Well, like, so why, why get this story? Sorry, David. With, with the son, with the brother's son, they didn't. They they see you have this adopted son, but they never really give us any peace on this. And uh, yeah, it's left it that way. Miguel, I, mean, I thought I found that really odd that uh, he was also coming of age in many ways. Uh, you need another that, hour for like that. The girlfriend says, "What a big heart your mother has! What a big heart your mother kind. has!" She actually called her kind. Yeah, yeah, kind and having a big well, heart. Well, and then she career. said, the, the girlfriend, um, the Miguel's girlfriend, yeah. said that she took her in. Yeah. Right. She opened right. Her up. And obviously, they don't have a lot of money, but they took her in, and she right. just did it. That's right. Yeah. And, and it's never also... mentioned by any of the other characters. It's never discussed. It's just accepted. Right. So that she was... also was very right. kind to the uh, priest. Remember, he priest. came to her, and yeah. I guess he was depressed. And she said, yeah. oh, you, you just was really... Very supportive of him. Right. We don't judge you, she said. Right. right. Well, I, which I thought showed some contrast between how she was professionally and how she was with her daughter. Right. And you never really see how she is with Miguel. They really right. focus the movie on her. And right. I think, so, I think the title. I think the title has another meaning as far as Bird with addressing what Ben was saying earlier, because at the end of the movie, the bird has flown. She's flown yeah. away. Right. Right. What school did you get into? Well, NYU. There was, uh, that's what I thought. It was down that's in Washington Square. Yeah. I'll, yeah it was. Well, I'll, I'll cover that. 
because there there's some thoughts on that, but it was a, not a controversy. It was there was some debate about that online, but I've got some information I'll cover in the notes first. But we, I wanted to talk something about the father first, the the Trace, Tracy Letts. Has anyone recalled seeing him in other stuff before? Yeah. Yes. Where? Where? Yes. What, what did you see him in, um, Fred? I didn't. It was a show I, on TV. It was a series on TV. He was in it last night. I didn't, I didn't watch it. <laughs> really? I, I know. I know this guy. No. Yeah, he, he was. He was in Homeland. Right. Uh, for, for many episodes, playing a politician who was well. Pol oh, was he politician? No, he was. He was like the head of the CIA, I think, for for several uh, episodes. I think until he got blown up. Remember that? Yeah. He was also in Ford versus Ferrari, the movie. He played Henry Ford the second. You saw oh, the movie. Oh, really? Ferrari. He was the one in the car when uh, Matt Damon drives around and scares the hell out of him. Oh, oh right, and he's like white knuckle. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh my God, okay. that was so him. that that was him. He, he was also in beard. Little Women. He was also in Little Women. So Greta Gerwig kept him also. But um, another movie he was terrific in was The Big Short. If you ever, oh, and I, I would love to tell movie. everybody to good. see that movie. That Everyone should movie. see that. It's a great movie. Oh, yeah, Everyone great should film. see that movie. It's, movie. it's a little difficult to accept, access right now because it's not on a, a great platform. But oh. if you can find that, it's a terrific movie. But, but my point was in all these characters, yeah. he tends to play a hard ass. Here, he's playing the most you know, warm, sympathetic, kind, yeah. caring yeah. man. Which I love coast. seeing. I love seeing it. The other thing <laughs> he did that, that's really huge is I think he won a Pulitzer for it, but I know he won an Academy Award. I mean, a Tony Award. He wrote August Osage County on broad, the Broadway play. Oh my God. Wrote it? He oh, wrote it. Wow. <laughs> wow. He, he's a playwright. He also wrote something, Superior Donuts was another play he did on Broadway. Wow. So he's written a few things. Superior Donuts. Um, but, uh, but for him to play a warm, compassionate role, for me, was just a revelation. And he was so good at it. I really loved it. That's a good point. Um, yeah. Okay, now I have some fun stuff I wanted to cover with you guys. Um, you. So let me get to that, because there's some really cool stuff I was able to dig on this movie that I didn't expect. <laughs> uh, let me, oh, so first off, the guy who sabotaged the, crit the critic ratings, his name is Cole Smithy. He has his own website on it where he says, oh God, he describes himself, I think, as the smartest film critic in the world. Mm. <laughs> uh, is he white? He got that from his mother. Um, okay, so he, um, if anyone is familiar with movie director history, you ever heard of the name Alan Smithy or seen that as a film director credit? Anyone ring a bell with that? There's a movie mm -hmm. trivia thing on that. No, okay. but I'm Googling Cole Smithy right now. <laughs> Go ahead, but, but Google Alan Smithy spelled with two E's on the end, because what that is, is if you're a director on a movie and you finish the film and the producers change it and you hate it, you use the name Alan Smithy. <laughs> it's a pseudonym oh. when you don't want your name on a movie. Oh, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's so I, I tried finding oh, out good. if this guy, Cole Smithy, if that's his real name. Oh. But it is. <laughs> it is? Oh, Cole yeah. Smithy is his real name. No, no he grew up in Richmond. He's got another yeah, first yeah. name. Cole's his middle name, but I thought that was Alan's kinda... his brother's name. <laughs> yeah, right. Could be. <laughs> um, so his, his right, he wrote, Lady Bird is a mediocre film about moving toward institutional conformity. In the mm. words of the poet, singer, author, Jim Carroll, it ain't no contribution to rely on the institution to validate your chosen art or to sanction your boredom and let you play out your part. He gave it a C plus. His original review, he gave it a B minus. But uh, he revised it and gave it a C plus because a C plus guarantees that it will be considered uh, not positive for Rotten Tomatoes purposes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Wired Magazine did a whole article, which unfortunately, because I'm on this computer, I can't do a screen share to show it to you. Uh, and so they talk about him intentionally tanking Lady Bird's then 100 rating with a negative review. He responded saying, that's a lie. What I tweeted in my public response to all the social media hullabaloo over my film review of Lady Bird was, context is everything. I had to consider whether to cast Lady Bird as fresh or rotten in the context of a perfect score that people were using 
to trumpet Lady Bird as the all-time best reviewed movie on Rotten Tomatoes. A B minus does not an A plus make. So then he writes, why is corporate media, meaning Wired Magazine, who wrote the article about him tanking the movie, why is corporate media so happy to punch down on a film critic? So anyway, he goes on with a, a very large defense, um, but frankly, I think it's BS he did it and uh, he did it on purpose. So yeah, there you it go. really sounds like he did. Yeah. So 10 things you didn't know about Lady Bird by Tom, For Tom Foster. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I told you about the poem, so you know where the title came from. The first draft of the movie would have made it over six hours long. Wow. wow. Uh, fortunately, it obviously got edited down significantly. That included um, Miguel's story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah, that's, right. another, that's another thing Cole Smithy, the reviewer, criticized. He said, why are we rooting for a racist character? <laughs> Now, do you remember why he called her racist? No. Okay. Do you remember the scene where she was talking about her college applications and M Miguel was there oh. and, and she was giving Miguel a hard time and he's right. saying, yes. and he, yes. she was implying that he got in because he was a minority and he goes, right. I didn't even check that box. And she goes, you're right, M Miguel. How would they know, Miguel? So that's where he called her a racist. So this critic is saying oh, she's the racist. Oh, that's terrible. That's okay? so bad. Yeah. So All right. So I, I, wanted to, I wanted to make sure I cover that. Uh, the director was the polar opposite of the lead character growing up. She was never rebellious or out of sorts. She was straight laced and followed rules. Uh -huh. um, now, where did Sorcy Ronan draw inspiration from for her character? Saved by the Bell. Anyone remember that TV show? Oh, oh yeah. God, yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Let me oh. let the so, um, yeah, so that was, she said there's at least a dozen shows she could have pulled from to emulate the life of an angst ridden teen teenager, but saved by the bell was her choice. Okay, yes. Yeah, I, I don't, has anybody seen Frances Ha? Did anybody yeah. see that? No. That's, well, I, re I really liked it. That's also yeah. a coming of age story about a, a young woman who has a hard time getting her act together. Yeah, um, not as happy a film as this one. What? Not as positive a film as this one. Oh. I think it was pretty good. No, why the, I really no, like it was that. good, but I don't think it was as up. No, it wasn't as good. Right. No, but but I'm just saying she seems to like yeah, that particular storyline of coming right. of age and struggling yeah. and yeah, struggling with big that. issues. That was sort of biographical. Francis Hall. Yeah, that was sort of biographical. Yes, right. Yeah, it was also written by Greta Gerwig. Right, that was right. the other one she wrote that was nominated, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was the one I was thinking. And it was directed by her boyfriend, I guess. It doesn't Noah Baumbach, be... yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's I good. have one question. Can I get one question? Mm -hmm. Sure. The um, whale yep. and the, yeah. Did anyone else, yeah. when, the critic, when the credits started the role, think this movie can't be over? This so yes. would be starting to get, you know, get traction. I thought it was a perfect oh. ending. Uh, I, I kept thinking, I can't believe it's over, but it was. You obviously. wanted more, huh? Yeah. You wanted more. The when, when I was watching it in the film, hours. when I was watching it and they get to that final scene where she she leaves the message for her mother and she's looking around, I'm thinking, end film. That In my head, I'm thinking, end film. And that's yeah. what happens. You know, you were, you were talking about, you know, how um, Lady Bird is rebellious. But there was one scene where she tells her brother and his girlfriend that they're never going to get a job with all those things on their face. Right. Yes. yes. You know, so she she was really not truly rebellious. She knew what she needed to do to be successful. That they they were never going to be more than cashiers at this store. You know. Well, wait a minute. But then Miguel, again, the right, he, he, he cleaned, up, the cleaned up, up his face. He got the job as the uh, computer guy. Right, but job. he had he had taken out all yes. of those piercings he wore a when he and went for the and job. And right. Up. right. Right. Yeah, he yep. cleaned it up. Like he yeah. listened to. to he listened. Yeah, well, after she said it, he goes like this. Like, hmm, she may have a point there. Okay. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so do you remember John Hughes movies, All Breakfast Club, and the other one? Yeah, Pink, yeah. I mean, the, uh, the coming of age, the famous coming yeah. of age movies. So this had a little more ang angst to it and uh, than them, but they were great movies as well in terms of uh, the story of becoming yeah, Ferris a young Bueller. Adult. Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a classic. Yeah, spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Breakfast Club is 
classic. That was great. Yep. Yep. We saw that. Frequency. All right. So some other some other kind of interesting behind the scenes tidbits. Greta Gerwig encouraged the actors to keep secrets about their characters. And uh, the, the author writes, this would certainly lend the characters a little more depth and mystique if even the director didn't know their full story. Also, the working title of the film before it became Lady Bird was Mothers and Daughters. Mm -hmm. yes. um, okay, Gerwig had a snack named after her from the cast. She was seen eating Cheetos and consuming Diet Coke so often that the cast named the snack the Gerwig. <laughs> All right, so now to address Ben's comment. The college that it's presumed Lady Bird was accepted by is Barnard. Barnard. Oh, right. it's not where it's down here. Was, but, it, but it's Barnard. It's, yeah. It says it's never officially stated, but the colors that are on the admissions packet seem to indicate it's that school. Plus, um, that is where Gerwig attended school, so it yeah. does make sense. That's what yeah. I, okay, but Greg, it's it's me, I have a location comment. It's if you really look at the end of the movie, yeah, they're walking on Washington, Washington Park. Right. Yeah. And there's a photo of the stoop at 114 Waverly, which, right. is a, which is called the Pink House. And it's a project I'm working on right now. Yeah, so it's, if it's, you look up. Oh, uh, my God. Wow. So it's definitely not. It's definitely downtown where yeah. NYU is. But there's the a window, stoop the windows are square. No, they're beautiful. Trust me. <laughs> wow. This is quite I'm telling nice. you, look up New York Barnard. The Post magazine uh, newspaper for the uh, 114 Waverly, the Pink House. There we go. Yeah. Really cool. Thanks, ben. All right. That so now um, there's, I, I have surprising facts about Lady Bird. Uh, Greta Gerwig wore a prom dress on the set. She got into the high school spirit of things by wearing a prom dress to shoot That's the prom so scenes. Yeah. She described it as a little tip of the hat for, and wait till you hear this, David, pretty in pink. Oh, How about that? yes. All right. Um, uh, Sorcy Ronan is a that. super fan of the movie Bridesmaids. I've seen her around. Well, that was good, that one. That was a All right, now, if you remember the, the songs in the movie that were playing on the radio? No. Uh, no. There was a Dave Matthews song they played repeatedly, Crash Into Me. Um, there was a Justin Bieber song. Anyway, in order to secure the rights to Cry Me a River, um, Hand in My Pocket, and Crash Into Me, Gerwig wrote personal letters to Justin Timberlake and Alanis Morissette and Dave Matthews. Uh, to Justin Timberlake, she wrote, you were the soundtrack to my adolescence. Your eyes corresponded exactly with my very awkward puberty. To Alanis Morissette, she, saw, she wrote, I saw the film Dogma, because I read that you played God, which seemed totally fitting to me. <laughs> and to Dave Matthews, um, she wrote, Crash Into Me is the most, was and is the most romantic song ever. Yeah. Oh, wow, that was good. Yeah. That's good. Did, they so now, her, did they charge her or they just gave her the rights to, to play the song? Oh, I'm sure they charged. Yeah, there's a, okay. there's a scale for that for <laughs> actual real Hollywood movie. Real. I, I do know a filmmaker who made Hey Bartender, which is an independent movie, and it had nine Joe Jackson songs in it. And I know the filmmaker, so I, you might have been able to see it on Showtime. But anyway, it's a pretty good movie called Hey Bartender. It had nine Joe Jackson songs, so I asked him and I said, um, how did you get the rights to all those movies? He said, Joe Gosh. Jackson gave them to me. Wow. I said, oh my God. He said, yeah. He said, here's the deal. Come down and meet me at this bar and I want to talk to you. And they did. And he said he smoked cigarettes the whole time, even though it was no smoking. Um, <laughs> and they talked and he said he wanted there to be smoking in the movie. He thought that was important if you're making a movie about bars <laughs> to have smoking. So that was like his one That's condition true. of giving him the rights to nine of his songs. So yeah. it was pretty cool. Um, anyway, now also getting back to David's point about John Hughes, um, Greta Gerwig gave the cast homework. And among the homework were John Hughes, Stephen Sondheim and Howard Zinn. They were considered required homework. And let me just get to this where it says why. Um, yeah. So Sorcy Ronan, uh, Lucas Hedges, the one who played Danny, the, the gay boyfriend, and Timothy Chalamet, who was Kyle, got research packets of movies, books, and songs from Gerwig to help them relate to their characters. Um, so Seasons of Love from Rent was for um, Lucas Hedges. 
Amy Mann, Save Me from Magnolia, and Stephen Sondheim's Merrily We Roll Along, and Sunday in the Park with George was um, for, um, were also for him. For Timothy Chalamet, Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States, which was the book in two scenes you saw him reading. Um, and then also The Internet Does Not Exist, which Greta Gerwig says is an essay collection that warns of the dangers of a network world. Um, somebody's got something noisy going on. If you can. It's Rebecca. Rebecca, maybe. Sorry, maybe. sorry. Um, and then Eric Romer's My Night at Maud's, which is one of my favorite Eric Romer movies. But it's, it's an interesting thing about a couple, should they or should they not sleep together? So it makes perfect sense for the, the scene where Timothy Chalamet and, and uh, uh, Sorcy Ronan had the, the scene where uh, she lost her virginity. Um, and also Pretty in Pink was, and 16 Candles were, uh, were given to um, Sorcy Ronan as well. Now, did you notice her complexion, Sarcy Ronan, that you actually could see her acne in several of the yeah, scenes? Yeah, she was very pockmarked. She, she had right. like acne scars. Right, so there's two comments that are a little conflicting. In one, it says the head of the makeup department, a woman named Jacqueline Knowlton, suggested that her acne not be covered up. She goes, I thought it was a really good opportunity to let a teenager's face in a movie actually look like a teenager's face in real life. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, what do you mean? That was what she was twenty-three Ronan. years old. She was not a teenager. She was That's 23. the other thing, right? So it helped her look like a teenager, even though she wasn't. But was it real acne? No, it was yes. fake. Oh, yeah, that fake was really her face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she says it's real. Yep, that's real. Um, she so had pimples now, at twenty-three. Uh, Greta Gerwig is only one of five women in history to receive an Oscar nomination for Best Director, although. Since that, it's actually been six because the last one just just won in the most recent Oscars. Um, so other than um, that one who just won, uh, the other one who won oh. was um, uh, Catherine Bigelow, Bigelow uh, in, right. in uh, The Hurt Locker in 2010. Uh, okay. Uh, Sarcy Ronan's performance where she did the, did the audition for the play. She was, that was her tribute to Elaine Stritch. Oh. That was a yeah, Broadway, nice. Broadway star. So I thought that was yeah, kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. All right, a couple <laughs> other little interesting tidbits. Um, Greta Gerwig said she always knew Sarcy Ronan would play Lady Bird. She said, I knew on page two, she was Lady Bird. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. when she had her do the reading, she said she wanted her to keep reading because quote, selfishly, I wanted to hear her read the entire thing out loud. <laughs> The two of them yeah, met in 2015 at the Toronto Film Festival, where both actresses had films premiering, and that's how they met. Ed, um, Ed, oh, yes. Ed, I I had read a, a review that said that the part her part was written as very rebellious, you know, really wild and rebellious, but the film really didn't show her as that as such a wild, rebellious person. I mean, I thought she was you know, fairly typical of a teenager. I don't think right. it was an extreme of and, anything. And what about the scene where she deals with abortion in that, uh, in that uh, oh, the, in auditorium. The, in the auditorium? I thought that was a yeah. wild scene in terms oh. of Catholic school. Yeah. Somebody well, that was pretty correct. That was pretty, that, that was. But it yeah. was courageous, scenes, but not wild. It was wild. very courageous, yeah. I mean, she well, spoke her rebellion. mind. She I, really I would, spoke her mind. I would think mind. that constitutes rebellion, but. <laughs> well, but I mean, it's not so out of the ordinary for what a, a young person No, she's not bombing the school or anything, yeah. And even right. that Catholic school, I mean, I didn't go to Catholic school, but it seemed like a fairly nice school. I didn't see, I mean, the nuns are really nice and understanding right. and funny. I mean, it yeah. didn't seem like the typical Catholic school. They, well, they call they it allowed... a progressive, in the reviews, they call it a progressive Catholic school. Well, I mean, they, yeah, the principal really was. was kind and, uh, yeah. yeah. After she wrote, you know, she's married to Jesus on that car, on her car. Yeah, <laughs> she's very that was so funny. It was yeah. funny, yeah. really. And yeah. the Sarcastic acting. So is that- well, such, What, what is did that you think what? of the teachers? What did you think of all the teachers? I thought they were supportive. Yeah, I, I thought it was yeah, a pretty I good school. I thought they were great, the, yeah. The math teacher, he was trying to make a move on Beanie. Oh, right, that's- yeah. That was a little weird when he had his pregnant wife. Yeah, that was a little, well, yeah. obviously Beanie had a crush on him, but. That, that was a little weird, yeah. But all the but others, he, even the coach was well-intentioned and caring and trying, you know. 
the, it was the football his, coach trying to direct the play. It was hysterical when he was doing it like a football play. <laughs> right. You know? He's like, like, okay, when that happens, you come in hot. You come in hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was hysterical. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That guy was very good. Um, yeah. So one concern that Greta Gerwig had was that she thought people wouldn't understand the mother-daughter relationship. She said it, it was in a um, the Hollywood Reporter's Director's Roundtable. She said, if these men, because it's mostly men that have the money to make movies, had daughters or were, or were raised with sisters, they totally understand the movie. They were like, yep, that's my wife and my daughter, or that's my sister and my mom. If they didn't, they would say, oh, do women really fight like that? Weird. <laughs> what do you think of that? Yeah, I can, I can see it, yeah. Okay, all right. She reminded um, me of my mother. She reminded me of my mother. Really? <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, and, and I, I actually love the teachers too. I thought the teachers were terrific. Um, and yes, definitely progressive for, for the nun to have a sense of humor about the, what she did with the car and everything. And yeah, terrific. Um, also at the actress round table from The Hollywood Reporter, Jennifer Lawrence, Emma Stone, Jessica Chastain, and Allison Janney all were fascinated by the thick Irish accent in real life of Sarcy Ronan. Um, so they almost all attempted to do their own impression of her before the hour long conversation was over. Interestingly <laughs> enough, Ronan was born in the Bronx, in New York, but moved to Ireland when she was three. Oh, uh, wow. interesting. That was interesting. Um, also, uh, the, the costumes were hard. The uh, costume designer said that while uh, Los Angeles costume houses had clothes from the 50s to the 90s, they had nothing from the early 2000s. It was the age of throwaway fashion, she said. Mm. And then another uh, something for the scenery in the background, Greta Gerwig wanted, quote, more crucifixes everywhere, unquote. Due to budget <laughs> constraints, the film was not filmed in Sacramento, other than obviously some exteriors. Instead, it was shot in a single story home in Van Nuys and a Catholic school in Pasadena. Production was able to spend a week in Sacramento shooting exteriors and landmarks like the Capitol building and the Tower Bridge. To properly transform the school, Gerwig told the production designer, Chris Jones, who was charged with dressing the school, quote, add more crucifixes everywhere. Thought that was interesting. And then, um, uh, oh, so as far as Beanie Feldstein, who again, the younger sister of Jonah Hill, uh, she had acted in Neighbors 2 uh, and on Broadway alongside Bette Midler and Hello, Dolly. Uh, oh, and then uh, Greta Gerwig treated the actors like they were her kids. That was Sarcy Ronan's comment. We were like her kids. What makes a great director is also what makes a great parent, knowing how to discipline their children, but also knowing they are completely loved. And um, Ger Ger Gerwig said, I never wanted to stop acting, but for me, directing is the thing I felt most fulfilled, my, most fulfilled my idea of what I want to do the rest of my life. And then the last note I have, Sarcy Ronan wants moviegoers to call their moms. Due to the film's core mother-daughter relationship, Ronan says, when people ask what I want audiences to take away from the movie, I tell them I want them to call their moms. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was nice. Yes. All right. So that's all I got. I think that covers it. That was a great movie. Yeah, it was very good. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. it shows the wisdom of the group that voted for that movie because I didn't yep. vote. Yeah, that. right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So I was outvoted. We'll Thank God. Oh, do you yeah. need our email addresses, Ed? Do you need us to give you our just, email addresses? Yes, if you could put them in, that would be great. And then let right. me also try to take a picture. Just just a complete aside. We we watched my the father the other night, and that's yes. a master class in acting. Yes. That's why he yes. won, right? Yes. But such a master yes. class. Yes. And, uh, what, what's the father? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, Anthony I wanted Austin's to won see the that. Academy Award this year for it. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, oh, right. right. Our right. favorite future subject, dementia. Yeah. Yes. Oh, right. dementia. oh, God. I don't think I want to see that. Not a good subject. I don't think I want to see that. It's me neither. Truly, a truly amazing what he does. Truly yeah. 85 years old. He's 85 years old. Truly amazing. Yeah, he is amazing. He is amazing. I still, I still remember, I think one of the greatest performances ever was Silence of the Lambs, him and Silence yeah. of the Lambs. Yeah. 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 your content? No. Where have been? Where are we talking oh. All right. So, um, yeah, please, you keep putting your, um, your emails in the chat. And uh, next one, I'm not sure if we'll do a voting one or if I'm going to pick one. I may alternate. So I may pick one next time. There's a couple I was thinking of, so we'll see. Um, uh, we'll see. 
Okay, and then again, please, uh, please on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, like catsreviews.com and on YouTube, if you're on, if you subscribe to Ed Katz, you'll get uh, notified when uh, this goes live, if you missed any of it or you want to see it again. So, I can't uh, believe it. The, uh, point of the information. What, what do you get if we like it? Like, what do you, is there a benefit? Like, what's the benefit? Like, uh, in, overall? Oh, I'm trying to build up my Cats Reviews page on Facebook. Uh, so more I want people to be able to get over 500. I'm, I think I'm pretty close. So, I want uh, so more here. people, if you get more likes, you'll get more people? Yeah. Okay. That's the hope. Okay. Yeah. okay. And, and I'm hoping at some point maybe I'll and do a right. on a radio station or a TV station down here. So it would be good if I have over 500. They, that, okay. that would be good. I should do it. What is it? Ed Katz? Uh, on on Facebook, Facebook, what is it's it? Cats re catsreviews.com. All right, I'll go on Facebook just for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and what, is, and what are you supposed to do? Like it? Just oh. like the page, yep. Thank oh. you. I appreciate All right. it. All right, so I got to find it. Cats Reviews. Yes, Irene. What was that? Thank you. Thank, Thank you for attending. I'm glad. I'm sorry about the hassle oh. with the technical issue. Okay. You know, there's another... another there's another good movie we saw. We we really thought it was great. So the Sound of Metal. Yeah, well, I saw yeah, it. That's really good. Uh, really good. Very good. I, I, I saw it. It's great. I saw it. Wasn't that a great movie? Great. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You get four hundred and six likes. Pretty depressing though. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <Depressing. laughs> well, I didn't think it was depressing. It was very good. Very talk, good. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. movie are you talking about? Look at the sound of metal. Right. The yeah. sound of metal. Amy, I think you would like it. It's wow. called really? what? What is it called, Anne? The, the sound, sound of, of metal. metal. The sound of metal. Okay. It's another drummer going but, deaf. But, but get past the first 10 minutes. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, when, oh, yeah. you don't, start, don't, when you yeah, start just, the movie, put the volume down a little. That's Yeah, yeah right. And it will <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> You He's a heavy metal bumps. drummer, so yeah. yeah. So when the movie starts, up. you really need the, the sound down a little, and then you can be, it's all yeah. right. Or you'll wind you up just like wait him. 10 minutes, and you'll love it. <laughs> yeah. right. I really love the um, Paul um, Racy, I guess is his name, the guy who played um, sort of his deaf mentor. Oh, yes. That guy was great. The ponytail. That guy, that guy was, was great. great. Yeah, he was, he was There's nominated a therapist. for Best Supporting the Actor. But think about him as a therapist. He was so good at doing what he's doing. He was so he, good. He was yep. good. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah on, on, uh, on Twitter, I posted about the movie, you know, that I liked it and everything. But I said, it's hard to recommend because it's, you know, kind of depressing. And, and even Olivia, um, I forget her name, the woman who played his girlfriend, yeah. she cried when she read the script. Uh, mm. um, so I wrote that in there. And the actor, Paul Racy, liked my, my tweet. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. But the real star is the audio engineer. He won an he won an Oscar. Yes. And yeah, that's what that that's the Oscar. He's the star of the film. Oh, he's he's a genius. Genius. Yeah, you told me I'm speaking. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks for participating. I appreciate it. You guys did a great job. Thank you. We're still locked down here in Toronto. We're in lockdown. You no, are not. Uh -oh. Yes. Oh, oh my God. Oh. No restaurants. No Toronto. Uh, Toronto. Wait a minute. Since you got back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's still lots of them. Yep. They opened up oh. golf courses on the weekend, this weekend, but you can't yeah. eat. You can't sit and eat there. Wait so a minute. How long are you part. there? You How part. long are you home? <laughs> No, no, it's a month. A month now. It's a month. You know what? That uh, I can't believe it. I can't so believe it. We should take it. a field trip to the, to oh Buffalo. Oh, here's the good news: still sitting beside yeah, right. each other. Right. Oh my God! I can't believe it. So they're yep. hoping uh, the restaurant. Right. The, the needles are moving quick. Fifty percent of the which way? Who are yeah. eligible? Yeah. Twelve-year-old grandson got a needle yesterday, so they're moving. Yeah, quick. good. Really picked up the pace. So that's a good oh thing. my gosh! I I'm shocked. I thought it was after yeah. two weeks. Oh no. man! No, that's our quarantine. That's our quarantine. Yeah. Oh my god! After quarantine. We had nowhere to go. All right, wow. Rebecca. I want to speak to you. I met somebody <laughs> named Ogozi in Israel. Yeah. Well, no, no relations. I don't think it's a relation, <laughs> to Benjamin. Well. Okay. Okay.
Why? The, Where? There's, there's, there's a Mario there's a Mario in, Sharon, in, uh, in Hoda Sharon. In Hoda Sharon. Hoda Sharon? No. Yeah. None of my families are called the Gozis except for my brothers who are here. Uh, all right. Mm. Okay. So I got a question for Ed also. Huh? Okay. Um, you know, I was in a bank and, and my. Uh, yeah, for Ben. For Ben, I'm sorry. And the, and the banker was an Israel, Israeli uh, lady. And when we were all finished business, I said, can I ask you some questions about your name? Her name was Dobrat. I said, where do Israel, I mean, everybody who came to Israel came from Europe. I said, where do these Israeli names come from? Where do the Israeli names come from? Are they biblical? Are they Hebrew? What are they? She said, no, we make them up. We just make up the, we make up the names. They sound a little like they're Hebrew, but they're really not, you know. Well, we, some of the younger people no, have no, no, made no. up names. Well, you know, I have a close friend, Israeli friend. Her, their name is Zilberboim. All right, you know, Zilberboim well, means I'm about first silver name. tree, silver tree. That I'm could be about the first name. First names. Like well, tall, what, how uh, old tals. was the person? Maybe they made it up. They're younger. I don't I know. Said, no, your the name, younger, though? there were some very strange names a few years back. That the people just didn't know what, you know, like you had Apple and whatever. And you over here, these people with the uh, names that uh, didn't make sense. Well, they said they wanted, made up she said we wanted to have our own country, we wanted to have our own identity, and we wanted to have our own names, and we invented really? these. So, names. like they have Edo, Itai, Edo, Itai, Monty. But those, but those, are, real those are real names. They're not made up. Yeah. His well, relatives some, have those names. They're not yeah. made up. No. Some are, so I guess some are. Some I mean, my cousin's got a son named Bar. That's that's a made up name, as far as I'm concerned. Bar? Yeah, yeah Bar. It's not. No. Bar. About Schitzel. Isn't Bar, I forget, <laughs> like Ben means son of, right? Doesn't Ben, doesn't yeah. Ben mean son of? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, ben. What is Bar? Ben you mean like, son of my right hand. Ben you mean. Bar son means something right. too like that. Oh. Like Bar Kokhba, right? Bar Kokhba is the light of, uh, it's, Kohav is the, is the star and Bar is the, the light. It's like a, yeah, he was the, uh, the Maccabees, right? Right. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. The I don't know, I'm not, that's hard, a hard question, these names. The other question for David is what happened with these, uh, the American press made it sound like you guys got beat up all over the place in Toronto. Is that, what happened there? What do you mean these, beat up? Beat up by what? By, by, uh, by um, Arabs. In the streets of Toronto. Oh, uh, you know, it's it's a uh, there's a lot of people living here in this thing, a lot of Jews. So we had like in New York demonstrations and uh, some reaction. This, yeah. uh, and you know, I was at at somebody's house today, Israeli. Uh, where the guy asked me, "What's the story with anti-Semitism yeah. here? What, like, what's going on?" I think right. this. Uh, I think anti-Semitism is going to be a, an issue for a while now. Okay. Yeah, we have a Holocaust. We have a Holocaust um, memorial in Philadelphia, and it yeah. was uh, desecrated. Created today. Oh God! Oh I my know. God! There's a lot That's of shit terrible. There. The haters in, on both sides, left, right. Have, oh, you know, right. they opened the box. Pandora's box was opened once again. It has to be shut again. But That's right. Be. That's right. It, it was Cut always it there. Yeah. Cut it off at the pass. It doesn't go away. It just doesn't go away. It never goes away. Yeah, never goes away. This was specifically right. to try to push Biden to see how far they can go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is it. Anyway, you yeah. got to do something about the point, Rebecca and Ben. Now that you're you're still yes. in Florida, let's I get that. So. Let's get. <laughs> hey Ben, come on. Let's get that. Let's Wait, I'm going to bring a shovel and start the digging head? foundations right, for I, our day. I think they are. Uh, yeah. The zoning problem there is bizarre to me. Like this place, you know. Look at Alton. Look at Alton. What they've done in Alton. The thing. They got stuff <laughs> popping out nonstop. Right. See That's because it's a Canadian company running the show. Yeah, yeah right. Home Depot's got the uh, air conditioners on the roof. I hear. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and Alt and Alton has Meatball Mondays. Yeah, I missed it already. I Lenora's, right? Mondays. What? What's that? Is that in Meatball Mondays? Lenora's and Lenora's. Lenora's. Oh, in Lenora's, we haven't even been there yet. Oh. Anne and I thought the meatballs were overrated, but Steve and Cindy love them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're, they're pretty good. For two yeah. hours? Come on. Oh, I didn't even get, I, we haven't been there yet. No, we haven't. 
no, no. There's a there's another bar going up in the corner there, a, a pub. Like a, oh yes, an ale house. Yeah, an ale house going up. Yeah, I, I saw David, that. How do, you, how do you know all this, David? Yeah, how do you know Woody that? flies over. Woody flies Woody over. Drone? And he drones. He's got a drone <laughs> doing surveillance. That <laughs> ale house is being built. That's right. It's a, yeah. right by Publix. I don't right know there, about right that. That'll be it's right on the corner of Donald Ross and. Uh, right. That'll be yeah. another like hamburger joint. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. That's okay. where, where, where did uh, the other brother, Donald's brother, uh, Trump buy? He bought somewhere nearby on Donald Ross there. So. His oh, son. No, his son bought an Admiral. 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 Oh. Oh, the, that's the, uh, the big one. Uh, but the other one bought close by as well. I don't know. Eric? No, I don't think so. Who cares? He bought it in Cove. Yeah, he bought the $10 million place. So I we don't have, know. at this point now, a house on the market for $1,850,000. So that's. Uh, yeah, did you see it with really yeah, crappy inside? Oh, that's ridiculous. Is, is, wait, does it come with a car? Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. A golf you, should car. See, you should see the inside. It's got it's got like these crappy cabinets in there. I, I can't get over it. Oh, you went. Oh, Listen, let it well, you, you can see online. It's got these like the um. Ring. What do you call those cabinets? Shaker. Shaker. I mean, it's not even quality stuff. I don't get right. it. Right. Uh, Wait unless a they're not. Ed, they're are not you having to pay for this Zoom call? No, no. There's no. We're, we're well past. Oh, it's Anne's account, okay. so we're okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's Anne's account. Oh, but you don't pay by okay. use. You pay by month. You but don't pay by use. Oh, yeah. okay. She, she's got a subscription because sure, sure. of yoga classes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. all right. Thank all you, right, everybody. Guys. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed. That was a great day. Day. You. Right. Yeah, we miss everybody. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Good Bye -bye. to see you this way, Elise. Hope you get out of Bye -bye. lockdown right. over there. Goodbye, Bye -bye. guys. We miss you. Bye. 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 Oh, it's dark. <laughs>